action. Hi there, we're going to plant up some winter interest pots. These planting rules are exactly the same whatever time of year you're planting to do with the structure, the interest and things like that. I'm just going to use plants that you would commonly find in the autumn, winter, spring. So first off I've got my container or pot. It's quite a big one but I'm wanting to create a display that's going to give me at least uh, about sort of four or five foot interest. So scalable, I'm looking at it and it's the height is coming to about four or five feet. So this is a foot and a half, this container. And then if I went up, say three foot, that's gonna be four and a half foot. So that's what I'm, I'm roughly looking for. Important to have lots of holes in the bottom for drainage, some broken bits of terracotta pot. You can use anything you've got to hand. And I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not looking to create a big layer down there. Uh, as research suggests, all you need to do is just cover the holes. If you put too much in, you can create a bit of a sump. So where a reservoir of water uh, which stays in the pot and that can be detrimental particularly in the winter. So now you see I'm going to put in my compost and like I say that you can see the the hole there that I'm covering with these broken bits of pot. Compost selection. I would either use a good quality peat free multi-purpose compost. You can use something like a Johnny's number three or a pots and container compost or a tree and shrub compost. Uh, however, I, I tend to fall in the camp of using either a good peat-free multi-purpose compost and keep the feed up or pot it up again each year. So take it all out, use that compost for something else and then start with fresh compost each year. Or you can make your own mix like I'm making here where all you need to do is add a little bit of feed each year and that's, that's all you need to do. Uh, the mix I've gone for is one third uh, coir, a one third fine grade vermiculite, just purely because I'd run out of coarse grade vermiculite. So any grade vermiculite will be fine. And one third a mix of different multi-purpose peat-free composts. Some, some that I'm using a trade only, some are, you can get on domestic market. You can just use one type if it's a good quality. Uh, peat free multi-purpose. So made has a few advantages. Uh, one is that it could potentially last up to 10 years but that would be more in a plant bed because the the, the plants will naturally uh, deplete the the soil nutrition quicker uh, they'll they'll tend to outgrow the pot and things like that so but it will last a good number of years longer than quite a few other composts this particular mix. It will use as little as 10% of the water it would normally use. So that's a great advantage, less watering, better for uh, water security and things like that. Uh, and better for the plants because they've always gonna have access to water. Feeds wise, there is a good amount of nutrition in the multi-purpose that, that I've added here, but also you can add extra feed every six months or once a year if you want to. So I think the two best feed options are uh, a good quality slow release fertilizer that would last up to six months, something like the Miracle Grow ones that you can get, or I would top dress with just the same sort of mix, fresh mix on the top. So you're scraping off a little bit of the, the top level of the compost perhaps put that into your garden compost or use as a, a mulch or somewhere else and then put this fresh amount in that's going to give a bit of a feed. I think if you go down that route though you may need to just top up through the year with some liquid feeds if the leaves are looking a bit yellow or red or whatever and it's not due to cold and then I would just use something like a general, a general seaweed feed or there's lots of different great organic feeds you can use there. So let's fill this container up and we're filling this container up to a level where it's going to be equal with this pot, the bottom of it sitting on the compost level and 
this sort of level, about an, an inch to half an inch from the top at the top. So we want our pot essentially to sit like that. And to firm down or not to firm down is quite often a question I get asked. I am in the camp that I, I like to gently firm down with my hand. So if we look here, I'm just very gently firming down with my hand or just lift the pot and tap it very gently. And the reason I do that is I'm wanting to get rid of any little air pockets in there because if roots hit air pockets it's just going to kill the roots normally or send them you know cut essentially cut the roots off so I don't like that but I don't push it down really hard I don't want it compacted so that again the reverse the root the roots don't really like getting into there it causes problems with water drainage and things like that so I'm just going to check need another couple of inches there now, if you're planting something very filiferous, flowers a lot, um, you could add that slow release feed into your compost mix as you go, or at least in the top few inches of, of your mix. Now, when you're planting in the center, sometimes it can be a little bit tricky to know when you've got the level right, but I just use, I happen to have a nice straight root, but you can just use a straight bit of timber or something. So I know there, Probably got a little bit more to do. And I wouldn't lose too much sleep, but you're looking to get it something like about that. And that's bearing in mind that the, the soil level in the compost is about right. Uh, if it's really low or really high, you just adjust it. So you would either drop if it's very high in the parts, then you want to drop your level down. You're looking to essentially have the soil level about half an inch or an inch from the top there. Now what I'm gonna do is just place my plants around before I take this out of the pot to make sure that I've got the right spacing. I'm gonna drink a little bit of coffee as well. Mm. Oh yeah. This I will be releasing from its cane. The plant itself is a winter jasmine, Jasminum nudiflorum. And that essentially means that it has no leaves during the winter, but it develops these, this flowering. And then obviously come the spring, the leaves emerge. And this is my wow plant, my thriller plant that's going in the center. So we're happy with that. Now I've got to think about my fillers. So those are sort of plants that will go round and just fill this general space. And I'm looking always when I'm planting for something different, something the same. So for instance here, if we see, this skimmia here is a nice sort of yellowy, limey color. And that sort of plays quite well off this jasmine. So. That's what I'm thinking there. And I'm going to need to build up the compost level again underneath that, but I'm just sort of placing them where I think they might work. Also out the front, I've got sort of a, uh, a mix of reddish, purplish in the scheme, as well as yellows. So it's sort of yellows, greens, limes, red, purple. You'll see, I'll take you through to the front once I've planted this and you'll see how it all works. So. That's another plant there, which is a little hebe I got for a pound. So it's a little bit <laughs> sparse there, but when I've got plants in front of it, it'll look fine. And that has a lovely sort of lilac-y, purpley flower there. So that's gonna go, as if you can imagine, like that. And again, something different, something the same. The leaf types are a nice glossy, color like the skimmia. At this point I need to start thinking about my spillers. So the spillers are, are plants that come over the edge and I've got quite a large spiller so I may need to even move my central plant back a bit because it's mainly going to be seen from one angle anyway so that doesn't matter. And I've got uh, a further carex to uh, 
feed my Carex addiction, which is uh, Feather Falls, this one. So that's gonna go in the front there. So you can see now we've got this Carex grass here, which is not a conventional spiller. You'd normally use something like an ivy maybe in a pot, but actually that spills over really nicely, as you can see. Again, I love a lovely green and yellow planting scheme, so there's something similar there, even though the leaves, and it is a bit glossy as well, this one, and it will really complement the pots out the front. So that's one there, and I have had to move my frilla back a bit, but that's fine, that's absolutely fine. So as you can see there, I've got something coming on here, but really it's lacking a bit of a ping of colour, isn't it? So what I've got here is some skimmias that are red, a little bit smaller as you can see. So they're gonna be, again, something different, something the same from the skimmia. The red will play a bit off this, this hebe. Again, the leaf types are like the hebe. They're all glossy. So that's, that's working really well. And they will go, I always think it's good to have reds, if you can, towards the front because it, the eye tends to naturally focus on those first. So as you can see now, if I pick up these to the level it's gonna be, you've got quite a, an interesting look going there. Now I could put another spiller around to the back because you see we're a little bit sparse at the back here now, but because where this is gonna be placed, it's, it's not really, needing a spiller there it's not going to be viewed from this angle so i just need something to fill it a bit this plant is begonia cordifolia so these are some divisions i took so essentially just a plant that i sliced through the roots of and made smaller plants from and these have got a nice evergreen leaf it's actually a semi evergreen so in a very exposed site or very cold site they they might leave, lose their leaf when they get the cold touch them, they get a nice little red tinge around the edge of the leaf. And these have a nice sort of uh, reddy pinky flower. Okay, so they're gonna go and just fill this back space for me. And they will have a bit of effect of a spiller as well. So they're gonna go like that. And I'm sort of feeling now like this is a bit empty here. And I do sort of want, I don't like this soil to be exposed, so I do want something to be in there. So I've got a little Heliborus nigra, which I think I must have got reduced because I don't even remember buying it. I wouldn't have bought it, um, this particular plant full price, so I must have got, a, got it for a deal. Um, again, uh, leaves are a, a little bit uh, dark, a little bit glossy. Uh, they do vary. The top side of the leaves tend to be darker than the underneath, which sometimes twists and gets exposed. The flower is that sort of whitey, sort of maybe a slight bit limey with a red tinge. Okay. So that is gonna go in there and fill that last bit of space. And the idea is, is that I might not see the foliage, but I'm not too worried about that. It's the flowers that will come up to this, this sort of interest filler layer. And with this Heliborus nigra, even when it gets late in the season, like maybe possibly late, uh, when you're talking late January into February, if they're still going in March, you might actually remove the leaf uh, and just have the flower. Now all I've got to do is pop this up. So I'm just gonna work one at a time now that I've got the placement right and just start filling in with from the deepest plant first. This one first. I like to sort of use this technique where you're putting your hand gently over it and then give it a tap and gently tease out. There we go. I don't muck around with the roots or anything like that because it's not pot bound so I don't need to think about teasing out roots or anything and just try and make sure I've got it 
in the correct position, roughly central. Again, I explained I'm going to do some things with canes in the moment, but I'm just going to keep it planted as it is for the moment. And then because this is about the same soil level, I'm going to take out my Carex, this big spiller. Quite often you'll do the spillers last, but because this is such a big plant, I'm just going by size. There we go. That's good. I might just position that round so it's got the best sort of spillage around the edge of the pot. So you can see like that. Okay. And now we just fill up compost around. When you're fit, filling in this and you're dealing with something particularly like a spiller, just make sure you're not burying the leaves. And remember that you want ideally a bit of compost along this edge here. The compost mix I'm using is moist, so it's got moisture in it. So I'm not, if I don't water it today, I'm not too worried. And since it's starting to get quite cold, what I will do is I will actually water it once it's warmed up tomorrow morning or about midday tomorrow, which is sort of the reverse of what you would uh, want to do. You wouldn't want to be watering at midday normally in the summer, but because it's winter, we have to consider about plant roots sitting very cold water. My little ones that are going either side of this. There we go. And again, I'm making sure that I've got the level correct with the other plants with this plant that I'm popping in. So you see the level is of the compost is the same. When I'm planting it, put a little bit of compost dressed over the top because if there's been any fibrous roots exposed, I want them just to have a little bit of a cushion of compost, but not much, just a, like a a fraction of an inch or a few millimeters whatever you work in I'll pop this one this side in this is quite extravagant sort of having almost multiple layers of fillers as in like different sort of heights of fillers you don't want them too far out so that they throw the balance of things out but really what you're thinking with uh, thriller spiller filler is that you've got your friller is your tall plant, your, your filler is your medium sized plant, and then your spiller is your sort of low plant that spills over. Uh, and you can get away with it being sort of medium to low. I think the danger if you have quite tall filler, uh, fillers and you have a very low spiller, again, the balance doesn't look right. Right, so as we can see here, we're working our way backwards nicely. Again, remembering to work in around these edges here. So important. Now for my Hebe that's going to go in there. So obviously I got this reduced at a pound because it was looking a bit thin and I totally agree with that reduction policy. Um, but it doesn't matter to me because like I say, I'm only seeing the tops of it anyway. Right, so you can see now I'm to that stage and my compost level is quite high actually so I may need to scrape away a bit because as I've been adding, it's sort of fluffed up. And I'm wanting to make sure that I still stay that half inch 
from the top. Okay, so here's my Oh, now this is interesting. I've actually got vine weevils in these. <laughs> hey, that's not good, is it? I've got loads of vine weevils in these as well. There, you, can you see the little maggots in there? So we won't use those. And now we will have to go through all the stock of these and sort these out. So we're going to stick the heliborus in though. That can go in. And actually, so my heliborus is going to go there. I've got again another little reduce thing and because it's not really going to be seen very much I can put uh, this little hookah in here Bought this for a pound um, this does have flowering spikes as well so it, it can potentially be the same as the uh, heli bore in a way and again slightly glossy leaves this nice red coloring to play off so it's perfect and the stems of the helibora red so it's going to work great and this again has a bit of a spilling effect so watch this space for a video on uh, vine weevil <laughs> i'm just taking off any tatty leaves off this Cut this one out That's my heli bore in. You'll see I've kind of positioned the flower so it's facing the way that it's actually going to be viewed and not from behind so much here. But as it was happened, it's quite handy because the leaves are more on the opposite side. It's good as well for using this hookah. Is I think I've got this, the same type of hookah in a pot that looks very similar to this out the front. So it's going to match up and blend with the other pots quite nicely. Again, making sure I'm working in the side here. Working in around any gaps between anything else. And there we go. That's my sort of more tatty side, which is hopefully going to establish quite nicely. That is my sort of front facing side, and it will be viewed a bit from this angle as well and a tiny bit from that angle as well. So that's what I'm looking for. We bring this up. Now I've got to quickly sort this out. And when I went shopping for a plant for this, quite often I will get my plants, well, normally I grow my own plants or get my plants trade do a plant swap or something but I do buy them on occasion from a garden centre um, and or online and I went to the garden centre because I realised I just didn't have anything the right height and so I had to sort of think of what I can do but I didn't want to spend bags of money because really to get the sort of size shrub I wanted I was looking at say 30 about 35 pounds upwards, really 50 pounds if I wanted the ideal thing. When I was looking in the garden centre to try and find something, I couldn't really find anything that was in like sort of reduced or anything. So I needed to buy a, a full price plant. I didn't really want to spend the sort of 35 to 50 pounds for something that was the right height and seasonal interest and would blend well with the other pots that I've got out there. So I've gone for a climber because I can get the sort of spiky look I want from the stems and it's got seasonal interest and it's only, what was this? I want to say, I can look at the pot in fact, 16.99, so still 17 quid, but it's a lovely plant. And I don't mind supporting the garden centre that I bought it with because they gave me my first job in, in the working in the garden centre. So now I've got these bamboo canes 
and I'm looking really at creating a bit of a fan. And it's just getting the angle right. And I'm looking to essentially, if you can see the top there, so we'll get that sort of angle like that, okay? So I'm looking, and but they still need to be firmly in the compost. Now the good thing is to do, once you've planted it, although you will be forcing a cane through some, some plant, root balls and things like that, that will actually hold them in. And all of these are established plants, so I'm not concerned about that. Right, let's try and get this other cane in. I need to drop the level down to do it, but let's try. That's looking about right. What I am going to do is just sort of mowing up there. Yeah, that will work well. There is another little one there, but if I do four canes, it might look a bit weird. So, and there's these two are quite small at the moment. I'm going to let these two just go up one. That will go up that one, and that will go up that one. The cane on one side is a little bit short. So, checking that I've got my pot level, and this is being ultra finicky, is the word of the day. I need to make sure that I am about there, I'm cutting it, and I can see by eye as well. I've got to just cut this cane, and luckily I have my secateurs to hand. As this is a bamboo cane, I don't mind using my good secateurs to do it. Yeah. So, that's good. Now I just need to tie in these and maybe tie in this main stem a little bit, tie in that stem. Here we are amongst the undergrowth and I'm just gonna show you that I am tying these stems back on. Uh, but I'm gonna use just this stuff, which is just like a roll of Velcro stuff I found. Uh, you could use string and just do that. And you could essentially use the string in, or tie in such a way that you're put it, using it as a barrier between the two, the bamboo cane and the stem that you're tying in, and then sort of round again and tied on. But it's not really necessary in this. I'm going to keep removing these ties and re, you know, repositioning things. So there's no real point to it. All I need to do is make sure that it's tight enough and probably at a point on the cane. You see this bamboo cane here, where there's a bit of a nodule. So I'll use that to my advantage to stop it slipping down the cane. And then I'm just going to use a stapler, just normal stapler, to staple that on. I want to make sure a couple there. Um, and that's doing the same job as the ties did that were on it. Uh, and I'm just reusing something, but so, like I say, normally I just use a bit of string. Right. The ones on this side, I'm just, you see, I'm twirling them around a bit. Staping this one just before I cut it, just to make sure I've got it right. Yep. So here we are. We've got my nice jasmine on its frame there. My hebe, my skimmias, my hellebore around the back there. My hunker are hidden around the back there. And uh, this lovely Carex spilling over. So my lovely frilla, filler, and spiller. I'm going to pop this around the front now. I will water it tomorrow because it's getting late and it's going to be too cold tonight. When I'm watering it, I will show you as well. We'll film that and you'll be able to see uh, 
the different planting arrangements that I've done.